Matt, what a year he is having, and his first season, remember, led Buffalo to the Mid-American Conference Tournament Championship and to the NCAA Tournament for the second straight year. Took over for Bobby Hurley, who's now at Arizona State. For Central Michigan, Keno Davis is in his sixth year, nearly had his Chippewas in the NCAA Tournament in 2014-15. It was this Buffalo team that beat him, but he's got a regular season championships, a couple Mac West championships, and we are underway in Mount Pleasant. Bulls in the all-black win the tip. Bounce pass underneath, and Smart gets the first two points of the game. This Buffalo team can score so quickly. And they get an early basket, but Cecil Williams Cecil answers Williams. on the other end. What we've seen from Cecil Williams over the last four or five games, Adam, he's settled a little bit for the outside shot. He's knocked down a few, but he doesn't shoot it at a high percentage. Needs to do a lot more of that. Punt faking out on the perimeter, getting into the paint. 27 points in the last game for Central Michigan. Catch and shoot three is good for Jeremy Harris, the junior transfer from Gulf Coast State. This Buffalo team right with Central Michigan in the threes department, hitting nearly 10 per game. Chippewas can fill it up from the outside as well, averaging 10 a game, so should see a lot of outside shooting tonight. Devontae Jordan runs the top for the Bulls. He'll drive down the left edge of the lane and get it to go in front of Luke Meyer. It's looked really easy for the Bulls. The first few trips down the floor against the Central Michigan defense. Very fluid, a lot of movement off the ball and getting easy looks at the bucket. A Buffalo team that's averaging nearly 85 points per game. That's tops in the Mid-American Conference and top 20 in the nation. Meyer works against the lower. Jordan has it poked away. Quick start for Buffalo. They're making, looking to make it even better. And instead, first turnover of the game comes from Wes Clark. Stepped out of bounds. You saw the entry pass on the last trip down the floor for CMU going into Luke Meyer. He's not being guarded by Ikenna Smart right now on the defensive end. He's being matched up right now on this trip by C.J. Massenburg. And the last trip down the floor was Devontae Jordan. So. Take advantage of that size disparity that you have down in the paint. Luke Meyer is going to have an advantage most trips down the floor tonight. He should get a lot of touches. Meyer's been real good the last few games from the outside. Averaging 10 points per game now for Central Michigan in the double figures. An average for the first time in his career. Two minutes in, five-point lead for Buffalo. John Roundtree working against the bigger Perkins. Kick out to Leo. Two on the clock. Just floats it up and gets a kind bounce. David DeLeo always using that pump fake. Another good move for the Chippewa guard. From the corner, Massenburg fills up his first three. And the Bulls have started perfect from the floor. Four for four. Sean Roundtree. And a timeout taken by Keno Davis. Quick start though. Not even three minutes in and already 17 points up at the tempo you would expect in a team in a game where two teams are averaging both nearly 80 points per game. And that's why we're just so excited about this matchup tonight. We should get a lot of scoring. And Buffalo hasn't missed a shot yet. 4-4 four four from the field and have knocked down both three attempts that they've had so far. And as long as both teams can keep the turnover numbers down, it should make for a really entertaining up and down game. And the seven Buffalo in front, as Matt mentioned, four for four with four different players getting those baskets. Both team clubs to share the basketball and pass it around. So no surprise that you've got four different scores. Keno Davis now will set up the defense as the Bulls face this full court press for the first time tonight. To the corner it goes. 
Step inside. The two is up and through from West Clark. Yeah. Buffalo can't miss to start. Really comfortable with the sight lines here inside McGurk. Trying to rebound after losing their perfect record. They did so over the weekend, but lost to Kent a week ago tonight. So Leo knocks down a three for Central Michigan. Well, the Chippewa is shooting right with Buffalo to start. But another bucket goes in. Jeremy Harris, the Bulls are six for six from the floor. And combined, both teams are 10 of 11. Not a whole lot of defense going on right now. Luke Myers, the only player that's missed a shot on the floor. Kevin McKay keeps it that way as he gets his first two points. Look at him go, Buffalo outrunning the first four seconds. And another basket, Wes Clark with four points. If you're not careful, the Bulls are gonna run you out of the gym. They wanna get out and run, and we were talking earlier today with our crew, Adam, getting ready for this one. If the shot clock gets inside 15 with his Buffalo team, something's wrong. They like to go and go fast. So that's something that Coach Oates has been preaching since his high school days here in the state of Michigan back in Romulus. We get a jump ball and our second stoppage. Nearly five minutes in and these two teams can't miss. Five point game early. I'm excited for my first game. Are you ready for this move, honey? Huh? Are you? When they lose, it's okay. No, it's not. Expectations are very high. If I play a dad, you know, I'm going to be labeled a bust. I'm going to pull Melo out and homeschool him. Yeah. So what do you need to learn Chinese for? I think we're going on a trip. To China? He loves you and he loves his family. But I don't know what's going to happen. No days off, guys. You may reveal. Oh. And the rain continues. <gasps> Ooh. As the Earl of Sandwich, I dub thee the Sandwich. Oh, well, praise the Lord. There was a time when the next big thing in food was stuffed between bread. Now, the next big thing is the Capital One Saver Card. Earn 3% cash back on dining, 2% on groceries, and 1% on all other purchases. What's in your wallet? This is a presidency gone off the rails. They tried to assassinate me, and I am the one under investigation. Welcome to the resistance. I swore an oath to protect my country. I will end this. Our presidency's just been hijacked. All it takes is one wrong move. People start dying. The country is in free fall. You're acting like it's me off my mess. I will hunt you down. I will kill you. Homeland. Season premieres Sunday at 9, only on Showtime. Start your free trial. Back to Mount Pleasant. You take a look at the series history between Buffalo and Central Michigan. It's the 32nd all-time meeting with the Bulls leading 18 to 14. And Central Michigan and Buffalo, the last 12 series, it's been all Bulls. 10 of the last 12, including back in 2014, 15, where the teams played three times. Chippewas won two of three. But remember, the Bulls got the big win as they went to the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history under Bobby Hurley. Nate Oates was an assistant coach on that staff. Bobby, of course, now at Arizona State, and Oates has taken over, and then led the Bulls to an NCAA tournament appearance the year after. So back-to-back -back trips for Buffalo, and now having this kind of season in 2017-2018. This goes to show you how strong this Buffalo athletic program is, and more specifically with the men's basketball program. But to have a guy like Bobby Hurley, who's gone on to Arizona State, had that team in the top five at one point earlier this season, and you look at what Nate Oates has done since he's taken over, extremely impressive. The Bulls, a very young team as well. You look across the board, West Clark, the transfer, the only senior right now that sees significant minutes. Buffalo, in the meantime, finally just missed their first shot. Now seven for eight from the floor. Five different scores already as well. John Rountree can't hit the jumper, and here come the Bulls the other way. Good ball movement to the corner, and that three goes from Nick Perkins, the junior from Ypsilanti. Been a gooseneck shot from Perkins over there in the corner, but gets it to go, and Buffalo continuing their hot start. They're just beating Central Michigan down the floor in transition. 
Kevin McKay with a difficult take to the bucket. Important to kind of keep pace with Buffalo in the scoring attack in the scoring category, but you got to lock in on the defensive end, and they love to move around, as you can see, off the ball, trying to get some backdoor cuts open, and they love to open things up and get some easy looks. Preston that Central Michigan is within six with the way Buffalo has started this game. Block on the defensive end. Beachler trying to get to the bucket. Cut off by Jordan, and a late whistle. No call yet from the official. Some help and side, the help side defense, four. Adam, right here. Get a good look here. Nice spin move on DeLeo, but Luke Meyer off the ball. Great job of coming, not necessarily from the weak side, more from the strong side, but just help side defense. Meyer, the fourth old time leading block skater at CMU with 120, so no surprise he gets that rejection. True freshman Matt Beachler at the free throw line. First points for the Lowell native. So, with the way that Buffalo has started, Matt, 8 for 10 from the floor, 4 for 5 from behind the arc, started 7 for 7 in Central Michigan. Here they are, 6 minutes in, down only 5. Gotta like your position right now and the resiliency of your team to battle for these first 6 minutes. And Central Michigan not too shabby themselves, 6 of 9 from the floor and knocking down a couple 3 balls too. Couple of trains for Central Michigan, 16 points. They're so good at the free throw line. Best in the country at just over 80% of the game as a team. Back to where Lob is up top for McCray. You can see it developing. Lost track of Montel McCray. He's not going to mess that one up. Lengthy 6'10 junior that knows how to throw it down. Luke Meyer has been shooting well from the outside the last couple of games, but he's 0 for 2 to start tonight from behind the arc. Quick triple on the other end. Offensive rebound by McCray. Buffalo does that best in the conference. Breaks the second opportunity, but another miss, this one from Clark. Patty Smith now will run the floor. McCain gets hit hard, and a foul on the Bulls. Montel McCray just sneaking in the back door. Coming off the perimeter, an off-ball play. Get a look at it right there. Luke Meyer just too late, coming back. McCray throws it down. He just looks like a guy that could jump out of the gym, doesn't he? <laughs> He's got that long wingspan, too, so it doesn't take much for him to get up to the rim. Josh Kaczynski missed everything, but the Bulls touched it last. Kaczynski going off in his last game here in McGurk Arena, one he won't forget. Josh was presented with a basketball before the game. Now the all-time three-point leader at CMU. Hit a career-high eight and had a career-high 24 points in their last win here against NIU. Offensive foul called on Cecil Williams. Good look at it here. Cecil Williams on back door. And you hear the coaching staff saying Javon Graves was in the circle when he was trying to take that charge and the evidence backs that up and well, the officials maybe had a different reasoning for calling it inside the circle but Peter Davis might have a gripe there. Still a six point game coming up on the 12 minute mark of this first half. Jordan whips inside and kicks it out and a travel is called on Jeremy Harris. That's the second turnover for the Bulls. Harris has got a launch. He's a 40% three-point shooter, and he had a wide open look out on the perimeter. Your team's four of seven from three. Keep shooting him until you start missing him. Second on this team with now 57 threes on the year, and you're right, Harris has already hit two today from the outside, two for three. I'm sure Nate Oates wants him to take that shot. Williams lofts it over to Kaczynski, partially blocked though. And back the other way come the Bulls. Quick up ahead, and a tough challenge as Carruthers found himself underneath the basket. Meyer running the floor, lights it in off the window. It's a risky pass from Cecil Williams, but it looks so good when done right. And then a turnover there, Central Michigan trying to get a little momentum right now. Central Michigan hanging with the top team in the MAC. It's a four-point game in Mount Pleasant.
and sisters. Respect. Are you ready? The throne. Who need a hero? You need a hero. Black Panther. Made PG-13. You may reveal. And the rain continues. <gasps> Ooh. As the Earl of Sandwich, I dub thee... The Sandwich. Oh, well, Angel. There was a time when the next big thing in food was stuffed between bread. Now, the next big thing is the Capital One Saver Card. Earn 3% cash back on dining, 2% on groceries, and 1% on all other purchases. What's in your wallet? All these people saying, oh, I'm tired of looking at the bar. Why does he keep getting on there? Why does he keep going up? But you can't take your eyes off me. No days off, guys. All right. I think we're going on a trip. To China? Well, the Bulls started 7 for 7 from the field and 4 for 4 from behind the arc, but they lead by just 4 after a great start offensively. Central Michigan has... Been a testament of a team that's been able to come back. They showed it again on Saturday. Double overtime against Ohio. They led for the first time in double overtime. We're down by as many as 13 points in that second half. David DeLeo with a pump fake out with just under a second left to go from behind the arc. Hits three free throws at the end to seal a 101-98 win. But what a gutsy win for CMU on the road. When Cecil Williams getting the headlines because of the massive double-double that he had. 27 points and 14 rebounds. We talk about it all the time when we're together doing games, Adam. It is so tough to go on the road in conference play and not only hang with teams, but get victories. Central Michigan, big one on the road over the weekend. That's an Ohio team that had over 8,000 fans back the Convocation wow. Center, a team that's sitting in last place, still getting a good home crowd, so not an easy place to play anywhere you go in the NAC, as you just mentioned. Bulls trying to add on to their four-point lead. They've led by as many as eight, but Central Michigan hanging around. Bulls have cooled off in the last couple of possessions, now shooting nine for 14. Still over 60%, though. Under 10 on the shot clock for the transfer, Wes Clark. Protects the dribble. He's caught. And then the ball poked away by Nuoko, and here comes CMU. DeLeo from deep. Rebound scooped up by Clark. David DeLeo fell down after that three-point attempt. Nick Perkins beat everyone down the floor in transition. Didn't get rewarded with the pass, but a little kiss off the glass. How about that from Tim Duncan, huh? <laughs> Fade away off the window, doing it better than the former Spur. Nick Perkins, a guy who doesn't start for this Buffalo team, but averaging 16 points. Just a little fade away. For fans of basketball here in the state of Michigan, maybe reminds you of Nick Ward a little bit for the Michigan State Spartans. Kind of that same build, a big guy, but light on his feet. And 6'8", 250, how about the touch? I know, can step away from the basket. It's an incredible luxury to have. Cecil Williams starting to become more confident from behind the arc. Can't get that one to go, though. Stays his six-point game. Stepping outside, Perkins tries again. And this time, Williams collects the miss. Rontry off the crossover between two defenders. Has it swatted out of bounds. You get the touch on one end, and how about the defensive presence, actually... It was Massenburg that was able to knock that one out. But Perkins is right there affecting that shot. His size is causing that block attempt. Chippewas have started cold from behind the three-point line. Now just two for 11. Up ahead, the Bulls quickly take advantage of transition. Jeremy Harris has eight. Meyer gets blocked by Graves. And now a three-pointer off from Harris. Great job in transition, Javon Graves, the freshman, not intimidated by the size of 6'10", Luke Meyer. Great transition defense. Chippewa's on nearly three minutes without a field goal. Looking to snap that streak, Williams can't do it. And the rebound tapped down to Harris. 
Bulls have equaled their largest lead, looking to take their biggest as they go inside to Perkins. He has the size on Williams who takes advantage. First double-digit lead of the night for the Bulls. What I love about that trip for Buffalo, Jeremy Harris wastes no time after he recycles the basketball. He gets a second touch on the trip, and then it's an immediate entry to Nick Perkins. Don't give the defense a chance to adjust, bring a double team. Perkins then has plenty of time to make a move. Ball is loose. Keno Davis wanted a foul. He won't get it. And in for an easy two is Wes Clark. Bulls have broken it open to a 12-point lead. And Coach Davis is not happy on the sideline. Inside, tough pass for Luke Myers, stolen away by Buffalo. And a foul in the backcourt committed by Sean Roundtree. Dino Davis takes the timeout, and he goes right to the official. Very disappointed with the no call on the steal just moments ago from the Bulls. A 30 to 18 point, 30 to 18 lead with 8:36 to play. Bulls just extending it, getting out in transition like we mentioned. And Central Michigan has gone on a scout scoring drought here in the last three minutes. Buffalo has gotten out, scoring quickly, playing good team defense. There's that look right there. David DeLeo uses the pump fake, and it's Javon Graves that Keno Davis wants to follow on. Graves uses his right hand to reach in and strip the ball from David DeLeo, but there's still a lot of contact on that attempt. And Wes Clark, one of the many Buffalo Bulls off to a good start tonight. 10-0 run for Buffalo. And their biggest lead at the moment, 12 points in this first half. This is something that they have done throughout the majority of the season. They've gotten these leads in the first half. Recently, though, they've struggled to put teams away. Defense hasn't been as consistent as what Nate Oates would like. And it's something he's been trying to preach to this team. The pump fake from Harris kicks it out to Massenburg. Williams, and he's a rebound on the other end. 12.05 mark, the last time Central Michigan hit a field goal. Then nearly four minutes. McKay ends the drought with a reverse lay-in. And that's the key, Adam. Up and under, using that reverse, trying to protect himself on that shot attempt. Williams brings down the board. McKay will try again, and a charge on the sophomore. That's the first time Kevin McKay under eight minutes to play. It's the Bulls by ten. The sophomore getting points five and six with a nice lay-in. You may reveal. And the rain continues. Ooh. As the Earl of Sandwich, I dub thee the Sandwich. Oh, well. There was a time when the next big thing in food was stuffed between bread. Now, the next big thing is the Capital One Saver Card. Earn 3% cash back on dining, 2% on groceries, and 1% on all other purchases. What's in your wallet? I'm excited for my first game. Are you ready for this move, honey? Huh? Are you? You don't need to lose. It's okay. No, it's not. Expectations are very high. If I play bad, then I'm going to be labeled a bust. I'm going to pull Melo out and homeschool him. Yeah. So what do you need to learn Chinese for? I think we're going on a trip. To China? He loves you, and he loves his family. And I don't know what's going to happen. No days off, guys. This is a presidency gone off the rail. They tried to assassinate me, and I am the one under investigation. Welcome to the resistance. I swore an oath to protect my country. I will end this. My presidency's just been hijacked. All it takes is one wrong move. People start dying. The country is in free fall. You're acting like it's me off my mess. I will hunt you down. I will kill you. Homeland. Season premieres Sunday at 9, only on Showtime. Start your free trial. A couple of coaches who have had some success in the Mid-American Conference, Nate Oates and Keno Davis. Oates, three last seasons. Keno Davis has won a regular season title, a couple of MAC West crowns, led his team to the 
title game in the Mid-American Conference Tournament. And Nate Oates, in his first year as a head coach, Matt, takes the Bulls to the NCAA Tournament for the second straight year. And remember, this Buffalo team, they hadn't been to the NCAA Tournament until Bobby Hurley took them in 2014-2015. Nate Oates does it the year after in year one. Two coaches that have had a lot of success early. They have, and positioning their teams for the stretch run right now, Buffalo sitting atop the Eastern Division at 9-1, and one, but Central Michigan is lurking, just a game behind second place, and then Toledo's only sitting there at 8-2, and two, so still plenty of time for the Chippewas to climb back into that Mac West race. And Central Michigan helping themselves out with a couple of key wins against NIU and Ohio in their last two. Four and six now on the season in the Mid-American Conference within striking distance and trying to get a good seed going into that tournament at the beginning of March. David DeLeo too strong from the corner three. Carruthers pushing the tempo. He'll go one on one. Natty Smith swats it out of bounds. Off the knee of Carruthers and the Chippewas get it back. So nice play from the sophomore Matty Smith. Not giving up on the play. He's back in transition. A really good play. There's some contact there with Dante Carruthers but still Matty Smith taking a risk trying to make a play for his team and he does so. Still a 10-point lead, though, for Buffalo. McCain, tough take to the bucket as it strips, and last touch by the sophomore. And McCain either wanted a foul or thought that it was off of Buffalo last. He's been aggressive early on. A guy that's much improved. Keno Davis calls him the most improved player on this Chippewa team. He averaged just four minutes last year and only two points per game this year. Nearly 10 points per game, and coming right off the bench on 25 minutes per game. Massenburg draws two defenders. Perkins, before he's set to shoot, will travel his feet. 6 turnover on Buffalo. And there's the Wisconsin native, Nate Oates. Maranatha Baptist alum, 1998. D3 college in the state of Wisconsin, so a Midwest guy. Spent a lot of time in this state as well. 11 years as the head coach at Romulus. Coach Wes Clark, who's now playing for him here at Buffalo while he was at Romulus. So a lot of ties to the state of Michigan for Nate Oates. Under five on the shot clock, and a travel is called on David DeLeo. So that's the seventh turnover on CMU. We talked to Coach Oates, and this is the closest he's come to the Romulus Detroit area because Buffalo didn't play at Eastern Michigan this year. They won't. They bend to the state of Michigan to take on Western Michigan, but he said it's still nice to come back where he spent 11 years as the Romulus head coach, won a state title, as we've mentioned. Each team starting to cool off from the field as Buffalo misses another. That's Jeremy Harris that can't hit. Well, Wes Clark Adam was on that Romulus team that went 27 and one. It was a first team All-State selection his final two years at Romulus. They beat Detroit Southeastern down there at the Breslin Center in 2013. I'm sure a lot of great shared memories between Nate Oates and Wes Clark. Round tree, the latest miss, McKay taps home to get a rebound. And again, uses the reverse lane to score two more. Eight points for Kevin McKay. You could argue Kevin McKay is keeping CMU in this ball game right now after the hot start from Buffalo. They've cooled off a little bit, and Central Michigan has been able to hang tough here in this first half against the MAC leaders. Buffalo yet to get a field goal since the nine minute mark, so they've gone on a four minute scoreless stretch. Under 10 on the shot clock, Massenburg, who's been pretty quiet, just three points, stuck in the corner. And what do we have? Traveling, or... I think uh, Smart's foot is out of bounds gotcha. underneath, and that's now seven turnovers apiece between both teams. And if you're the Chippewas, you got to start taking advantage, get some points off turnovers, start slicing into this deficit a little bit. you got to make the Bulls pay. Two teams that don't turn it over often. Each averaging around 12 and a half a game. Let's see if Central Michigan can take advantage of this scoreless drought. Get back closer. Roundtree on the drive. Contacts. What do we have? Blocking foul, and Roundtree 
going to the free throw line. We've seen a couple of charges go Buffalo's way. That time, the block goes Keno Davis in Central Michigan's way. Sometimes you got to take a risk driving into the lane. Trying to make a play for your team. And just a reminder, fans, you can get your exclusive basketball ticket package. It's called the Rivalry Package, where you get four games for the price of two. Adults, only $24. Seniors, $20. You can use the promo code WEEKEND18 at Ticket Central or visit www.cmbchipbox.com. A lot of good basketball games upcoming here inside McGurk Arena between the women and the men. And it all starts on Saturday, the women. Taking on Toledo, and then you've got a doubleheader mixed in there, too. I haven't heard. Central Michigan women's basketball team. They're, they're pretty good, huh? Kind of, kind of doing what Buffalo's doing on the men's side. They are unstoppable right now in the MAC. Buffalo men and women's team playing very well. Right. Central Michigan just picked up a big win against the women. Chippewas are 10-0 to start conference play. Off the deflection, Perkins can't get it. Rebound collected by Graves, a scrum, and I believe we've got a foul on Buffalo. Actually, they'll call a jump ball, and it'll stay with Buffalo. Good job by Maddie Smith. The extra effort, getting on the floor. Maybe a bruise or two coming out of that, but they're going to play for your team getting dirty. No look pass and an easy two for Massenburg. Chipwatch just fell asleep under, underneath their own basket. An awareness by the Bulls to go quick, take advantage right off the timeout, and that's hours in the practice gym, knowing your sets, not even having to think, just immediately calling a play and knowing exactly where you need to be. Under four minutes to play, first half. CMU hanging around, down eight, looking to keep it close. Beachler will try the three. Rebound tracked down by McKay. Stepped out of bounds. Ball back to Buffalo. Under four minutes to play in this first half. Buffalo has led the entire way in front by eight in Mount Pleasant. You may reveal. And the rain continues. Ooh. As the Earl of Sandwich. I dub thee the sandwich. Oh, well, there was a time when the next big thing in food was stuffed between bread. Now the next big thing is the Capital One Saver Card. Earn 3% cash back on dining, 2% on groceries, and 1% on all other purchases. What's in your wallet? This is a presidency gone off the rails. They tried to assassinate me, and I am the one under investigation. Welcome to the resistance. I swore an oath to protect my country. I will end this. My presidency's just been hijacked. All it takes is one wrong move. People start dying. The country is in free fall. You're acting like it's me off my nest. I will hunt you down. I will kill you. Homeland. Season premieres Sunday at 9, only on Showtime. Start your free trial. Best team in the MAC so far through 10 games this year. The Buffalo Bulls in front of Central Michigan, 32-24. As we come back to Mount Pleasant, just under four minutes to play in this first half in the Girk Arena. And this is if the tournament started today. Obviously, Buffalo would be the one seed. All 12 teams make it to the MAC tournament, but the first four get that straight bid to Cleveland, where the final eight teams have to play on host sites with the top four seeds. Five through eight seats will host the nine through 12 seats. So the Chippewas right now on that away trip where they would be heading to take on a MAC foe, which again, you don't want to be on the road to start the MAC tournament. When you take a look at that, Kent State was six and four, and they were the top tournament host site team. So they were the fifth seeded team in the MAC tournament right now. So not a whole lot of separation in the middle of the Mid American Conference. Buffalo and Toledo have separated themselves. We know that. 
but there's plenty of, of other teams that are right in the mix, right in the middle. CJ Massenberg with the last bucket. He started to heat up. Now eight points at the fifth three for Buffalo in this first half. Javon Graves, the freshman from Malvern, Ohio, picks up the first. Offense has been tough for Central Michigan the last few minutes. That's why the Bulls have been able to build up the advantage back into double figures at 11. Kaczynski for three. That dead ends off the rim. Rebound, knocked around, and it's pulled out by Buffalo. And you gotta think Central Michigan's gonna break out of the shooting slump at some point. And shooting 13% from three to start this one when the last game we did here in McGurk Arena for this men's team, they could not miss from the outside. They've had two three-minute stretches where they've gone without a basket. Offensive rebound by the Bulls. Good fight ball, underneath the tie ball, ball, but it goes back to Central Michigan. And the chip was, you mentioned, Matt, shooting just 13% from the outside, 2 for 15. And they come in, one of the best teams in the country at knocking down threes. But a cold start, and this has been something that Keno Davis and the staff have tried to figure out this year. When they get these stretches where they can't score, who do they go to? Because they don't have that top guy like they did a season ago with Keen Erasin. Cecil Williams, the latest to miss. Well, they're just settling for jump shots, but there's Kevin McKay getting dirty on the floor. Great hustle leads to a look for three. Another miss, though, from the outside. McKay tracks down another loose ball. Great work from the sophomore, and the Chippewas will settle for another possession. Kaczynski tries from deep. That one goes. You <laughs> know, Davis throws his hands up in the air over on the sideline saying, about time, finally one goes down. That's the old touchdown Central Michigan side. <laughs> Third three for CMU. A sense of relief let out, I'm sure, by Coach Davis after that one finally goes. But you got to love the start from your team. They're still down just eight against the MAC leaders right now. Perkins unable to hit, but an offensive rebound by Harris. And Buffalo will reset under 90 seconds to go. Jordan slicing through the defense, scores off the backboard. So tough when Kevin McKay is challenging like he does at the rim. Great athleticism by Devontae Jordan to finish near the rack. Sophomore, Jordan upping his average from just under three points per game last year up to nearly eight. Offensive foul again. That's the third on CMU in this first half. And Roundtree has his second. And I got caught here. Way away from the basket. Great job by Jordan to move his feet. Get in position. In good position enough to force the official to make a call. And he goes charge and frustration settling in for the Chippewas. Both teams wanted to limit turnovers and Chippewas have eight as does Buffalo. 16 total in this first half, under a minute to play, and a foul called on the baseline against Cecil Williams. So a couple of tough pickups for Central Michigan, two of their top scorers, each getting two fouls in the final minute. Sean Roundtree just moments ago, Cecil Williams there. So he'll come out, Luke Meyer back in. Luke Meyer was on the bench for a long stretch in that first half. Roundtree and Williams each with two personals, but Meyer has yet to pick up a personal foul. That's the good news for CMU. Bad news, you're still down by 10 points. Bulls going inside. Javon Graves misses the reverse. CMU have to think it's a win if they can get this under 10. McKay, the third time he's gone to that reverse layup. 10 points for the sophomore off the bench in this first half. The team just seems to rally around number 20 in white. Whenever he's on the floor, the Chippewas seem more comfortable and seem to just be playing with a little more effort and energy. A timeout taken by Buffalo using that use it or lose it timeout. Great work from our production crew in the back letting us know McKay perfect from the field. Five for five. 
he has been outstanding. And again, you mentioned it earlier, Matt, he's keeping Central Michigan in this game. When they have had these scoring droughts, it's been the sophomore Kevin McKay that's provided the spark and has been able to get to the basket going fearless to the rim. Without Kevin McKay, the Chippewas are 6 of 25 from the floor. So, I mean, he's been everywhere. You see him right there grabbing an offensive rebound. He's got 10 points and three boards. McKay doing everything he can to provide a spark for this Chippewa team. So Central Michigan trying to keep it a single-digit game. After 20 minutes of play, the Bulls will have one more try. Shot clock is off, 18 seconds to go out of the Nate Oaks timeout. Wes Clark will run it from the top, the senior transfer from Missouri. to five. They go inside to Perkins. Runs over to Leo and that's an offensive foul. And this could be a huge turning point because there's still a little under four seconds left on the clock. Chippewa has a chance to cut into the deficit a little more. David DeLeo slow to give up. Get up off the floor. He's given up 35 pounds to the big fella Nick Perkins. That's a big time take in the charge department for DeLeo, giving up his body. Quick shot, potentially from Roundtree. Sets his feet, launches for three, and the first half is complete. Central Michigan and Buffalo can close the gap towards the end of that first half. Harris launches from the outside, and an empty trip for the Bulls to start. Central Michigan went through a couple of stretches without scoring. That's one of the reasons that they're behind at the break. See how they handle this Buffalo defense. Williams all alone at the top. Misses the three. Not his favorite shot, but he has started to take the open ones. As Massenburg flies by Roundtree. Harris collects the miss and puts it back in. Roundtree. An offensive foul again, and the junior transfer is now tallying three fouls. And Sean Roundtree has to know, starting this second half, I'm playing with two fouls. I can't pick up a third really quick, and he decides to try and bull rush his way into the paint. This gets tabbed with an offensive foul. Tough for Roundtree, picked up his second with a minute left in the second half, and here he gets the third a minute into the second half. Hasselberg nearly traveled, stayed on his feet though. Whipped around the perimeter, and Williams able to sky for the board. Smith up ahead, it goes off the backboard, and taken away by the Bulls. Clark steps into the paint, no look pass, and it's missed by Smart. Easy lay, it gets it back though, and goes up strong. <laughs> I know he was gonna hear it from his boys after the game if he didn't convert that one. Still gets the bucket, but really wanted to slam that one home. Buffalo equaling their largest lead of the game at 12. Williams gets behind the Buffalo defense. It's a good find from his teammate David Leo out on the perimeter on the near side. Cecil Williams just a backdoor cut and finding an inch of space. Chippewas will need more from their second leader's leading scorer. Cecil Williams just two points in that first half. And it's a 10-point game. Look at how quick Buffalo whips that ball around. Opens up a three. And Buffalo has started cold here from behind the arc in the second half as we get a foul underneath. Kenneth Smart picks up his first. Well, after Buffalo started four for four from three points, they're now just five for 17, shooting under 30%. Chippewa's looking to go on a run and try and get back into this one. McKay finished the half strong, five for five from the field, ten points. DeLeo a catch and shoot three. Williams gets the offensive rebound. And McKay challenge, throws it up, it goes underneath the basket, up ahead, out the other way. Harris in front of Roundtree, glides in for two. Buffalo turning in. A turnover, turning a turnover into 
easy points the other way. Harris, the outlet. That's an easy finish for him. Roundtree quickly back in the game after picking up that third personal, so he'll have to be careful. Just five points for the transfer and another turnover. Open three, Massenburg bounces around to DeLeo. Williams, good create off the dribble. And the Chippewas miss another. We've got a foul on the Bulls, though, underneath the basket. Buffalo just trying to run every time down the floor. Central Michigan has been able to find a couple creases in transition coming the other way off some missed shots and early shots in the shot clock for Buffalo. They just haven't been able to get them to go down. Three of 21 from three tonight. Remember, like Buffalo, Your Central Michigan, it seems like they need to try and get inside, man. They're three for 21 from behind the arc, shooting this 14%. They've shot just four free throws tonight. So you got to get to that free throw line, especially when you're the top team in the NCAA, shooting over 80%. And we are underway. Williams being given the jumper right now if he wants it. He's trying to find the lane instead. He'll pull up, bouncing around, and he crawls home. The hometown bounce. Central Michigan will take any bounce they can get in their favor as Javon Graves has his first three points. So tough to stay focused. As soon as a shot goes in, you need to get back in transition defense. And a foul as Williams tries to attack. The Bulls have extended their lead, the largest of the game, 13 points. And again, it's the transition. Jeremy Harris leaking out and helping the Bulls gone. It's time for some straight shots. Sign the contract and get a free smartphone. Those free phones trap you in a pricey contract. With Straight Talk Wireless, only iPhone 8 for under 35 bucks a month, no contract. Straight Talk Wireless, only at Walmart. Could Michaela the Prince use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank, all while performing the grandest longer tank? She could, but in real life she pays her sister for that sweater she's there. Chase, make more of what's yours. This is the presidency going off the rails. They tried to assassinate me and I am the one under investigation. Welcome to go resistance. I swore in to protect my country. I will end this. The presidency's just been hijacked. Has it poked away. All it takes is one wrong move. Quick stop for Buffalo. Dying. They're making looking at the country is in free fall. You're acting like it's me off my bed. I will hunt you down. I will kill you. Homeland. Season premiere Sunday at 9. Only on Showtime. Start your free trial. He's not being right now on the defensive end. He's being matched up right now on this and the last trip. Take Barry that you finished most trips down the floor tonight. He should get a lot of. Take a look at the Bulls' upcoming schedule. The top team in the Mid-American Conference starting 9-1. And, and they will get a couple of games at home after a visit to Northern Illinois. This Buffalo team that perfect against the Mac West this season, 6-0. Going back to last year, they've won 11 straight against the Mac West. For Central Michigan, they just took out Ohio, won in double overtime. Now Buffalo. Here and then Akron, Northern Illinois, and then back home against Eastern Michigan. So a couple of road games in a conference where away from your own building, it is ruthless. It is, and it just goes to show you what Buffalo's doing is really unbelievable to be able to be 9-1 and one whenever a team can get up to a start like they have in conference play. And that's just not in the Mid-American Conference. That's nationwide whenever a team can dominate the way Buffalo has and take down a team like Toledo only lose to a team like Kent State when you kind of falter down the stretch Buffalo so impressive and looking like the class of the New American Conference right now Central Michigan trying to hang with the class of the Mac Cecil Williams helping their cause it's an 11 point game Williams now with 
six of his eight points coming in the second half. And we just mentioned it, Central Michigan struggling, three for 21 behind the arc. We'll see if they try and assert themselves inside. As they've shot just six free throws, made them all though. DeLeo on the weak side comes up with the rebound. Chippewa's trying to get this back into single digits. Only one player in double figures for CMU, Kevin McKay. On the other side, Jeremy Harris, the only one in double figures for the Bulls with 12. David DeLeo hits the jumper. That's a tough shot. Defender right in your face. And this is where Central Michigan ends, Ben Adam. Hanging around around the 10 point margin and Buffalo's been able to knock down big shots with answers every single time. Wes Clark with his first three points of the second half. Nine points for the senior transfer. Bulls now with seven threes, shooting 33% from behind the long line. McKay a bounce to Meyer, who has it knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with CMU, nine seconds on the shot clock, as a couple of Bulls checking back in, Jeremy Harris and Devontae Jordan. Buffalo has led the entire night. Jumped out to a 10-4 lead. Ballooned the lead to as large as 8, 20-12, and started 7-for-7 seven seven from the field. Chippewas held their own, though. Kept it in single figures at the break. Buffalo is led by as many as 13 now here in the second half. Four on the clock, Roundtree spins and fires. And the shot clock expires. Kevin McKay was trying to get a handle on the basketball and just couldn't get to it. Now having this kind of you don't want to see the turnovers start to stack up. We're trying to make a comeback in a game. And we've talked about it with this Central Michigan team. Who's the one to provide the spark? It was Kevin McKay in the first half. Had 10 points, was in double figures, but who can do it now down the stretch? You know, you've got 14 minutes left, and is it going to be Luke Meyer down in the paint? Is it a couple threes from Josh Kaczynski? Good footwork from Jordan as he maneuvers around Meyer for two. And Buffalo not shooting it exceptionally well from the outside either, so they're trying other ways to navigate for points. Round three, good pump fake and patience. They get back in transition. Buffalo looking to run like they always do, and things open up. 12-point game, staying around this range. Bulls miss the three. Massenburg collects the rebound. Opens up Jordan. Back-to-back -back misses, a couple of good looks for Buffalo. McKay off the spin move. Who do the Chippewas go to? Again, what they've been trying to figure out all season. So many capable scorers, but who can step up in key moments? Round three with under five on the clock. Meyer challenged and has it swatted away as the loose ball is picked up by Buffalo. Swung around the baseline, saves, and then kicks last off of Jordan back to CMU. Good also play. Josh Kaczynski, a senior, trying to do what he can for his team. It's a couple possessions now where Central Michigan has let the shot clock wind down and they haven't gotten a good look. I think we've kind of settled on the fact that if the shots aren't falling from the outside, you got to start trying to go inside. And that's not going off the dribble out on the perimeter. That's back to the basket, posting up underneath. You get a foul on Buffalo. It'll go on Montel McRae. And really, the shots aren't falling from the outside for either team. Buffalo shooting a little bit better, 30%, 7 for 23. But Central Michigan just shooting 13%. That's been the issue. 3 for 22. There's seven threes under their season average. And you can tell Pino Davis, he's made that an emphasis that his team has to get to the basket. Sometimes you don't have good shooting nights. Kino Davis, or excuse me, Cecil Williams continuing to be aggressive. Second foul in the meantime on Montel McRae in a couple of seconds. It's been right around this margin for most of the game, about 10 points. The 7 to 12 point range is where Buffalo has been working. Roundtree lost his footing, 
Ball is loose. He gets tied up. It'll stay with CMU. Five seconds on the shot clock. As John Roundtree just hit a slippery spot on the floor. It's hit hard. You just see the Buffalo defense they're just clogging things up. Chippewas don't really have a whole lot of room to operate and haven't been able to penetrate inside. Gonna be a shot quick here. Williams with four. Goes right at the bucket. Falling over is Mastenberg. No call, and Williams takes advantage. Maynard's looking for a charge over there on the sideline. Heard him say earlier, what do we have to do to get a charge called underneath? We've seen four or five charges called on Central Michigan in this game already. That one didn't get called. Perkins flat on the shot, out the other way. Roundtree has it knocked away. When you mentioned Buffalo, their athleticism defensively, that's the difference. I mean, their offense, you can see, they're using that athleticism to get out and run in transition, but defensively, as you mentioned, they can plug up holes, make it tough to drive, and they can turn a jump shooting team at Central Michigan, and sometimes, when they knock down those threes, they like to keep shooting them. Makes it harder to get inside the paint. Really does. And if the outside shot isn't falling, then the defense can sag inside. And that's why you just need a couple to go down from the outside. And if you're missing them, you've got to hit the offensive glass and make sure guys are right there to clean it up. Cecil Williams between three bowls pulled it down. Ten points for the senior in the second half. He now has 12. Answer, though, from Jeremy Harris. Remains a 10-point game with 11 minutes to play. Harris, the only goal in double figures with 14. Again, hasn't been quite the offensive display that we typically see from Buffalo, but still finding a way to get it done. Williams continues to shoot with count. That rolls off. And that's now the fourth possession on the last five where it's just been a struggle to break down this tightly knit Buffalo defense. Beachler ahead to Roundtree, avoids contact and swoops in. Getting out and running, getting an easy basket. Don't allow Buffalo to set up on the defensive end. Beat them down the floor at their own game. Again, Central Michigan has been as close as eight. That was the halftime deficit. They haven't been able to creep any closer. Bulls have had an answer all night long. This time it's Jordan. Shields and throws it high off the window. A lot of contact there as well. And still able to get it to go. Catch and shoot to Leo. Chippewas continue to shoot poorly from behind the arc. Roundtree misses the net. Can't buy a bucket from the outside. Three for 25. And up top, the Bulls able to connect to Jeremy Harris. That transition game, getting out in the fast break. You start to wear your opponent down when you can do that. Starting to get at that tipping point right now in the ball game. Foul inside called on Buffalo. Looks like they'll get Devontae Jordan. Buffalo has kept it in double figures and remain in front 57 to 45 Sean Roundtree trying to keep the Chippewas close with the Chase mobile app Michaela the Prince could pay practically anyone at any bank all while performing a grand jeté between two grand pianos she could in a commercial in real life, she yeah, uses it to pay her sister it. from her couch Bobo for that sweater she's averaging What sweater? Points. Life. Live Michaela's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. This is a presidency gone off the rails. They tried to assassinate me, and I am the one under investigation. Welcome to the resistance. I swore an oath to protect my country. I will end this. The presidency's just been hijacked. Thanks as one more. So William started to come along. The country is in free fall. You're acting like it's me off my bed. I will hunt you down. I will kill you. Homeland. Season premieres Sunday at 9. Only on Showtime. Start your free trial. Again. Miss. Rontree off the crossover between two defenders. Hasn't swatted out of bounds. 
actually I was able to knock that one out. Actually, it was Massenburg that was able to knock that one out. I think that shot this size is causing that one. Great night so far for Buffalo's Jeremy Harris on a shooting night that hasn't been great for either team. Harris exploding for 16 points a game high. Also has three rebounds, three assists, shooting over 50% from the floor. What a get for the Bulls. He's in his first season, Matt, the transfer from Gulf Coast State. He was the number two ranked junior college player in the nation by JucoRecruiting.com last season, averaging nearly 19 points per game and just over five rebounds a game. And Nate Oates plucked him out of Florida. Well, he did. And, you know, recruiting is such an interesting and intricate process. You know, there's always, you know, different things and ebbs and flows in the process. And you never really know where you're going to end up settling on going or where you think you're the right fit. And, you know, sometimes parents play a role. In this case, for Jeremy Harris, his mom had a big impact on his recruiting process, and she's the big reason why he ended up here at Buffalo. She was in North Carolina. He's in Florida. All the coaches went to visit Jeremy in Florida. The only staff that went to visit his mom, the Buffalo staff. And that's why he is a bull as an and one for C.J. Massenburg. And the junior into double figures, and the Bulls continue to pour it on. Cut so hard and so well off the ball. You're just outworking your opponent at times, and that's what was missing for Buffalo last week when they fell to Kent State. They gave up an 18-point lead in the second half. They seem much more focused here on the road. And sometimes when you go on the road, it's a little easier to focus. There's less distraction. It's us against the world. It's pretty much the coaches, the managers, and the players getting off that bus. And you've got one goal, to get a win, and then get back on that bus and on to the next one. It's been a gritty performance so far for Buffalo. Again, on a night where both teams just aren't shooting it very well. Massenberg into double figures now with 11 for the 22nd time this season. Just two games where he hasn't eclipsed the 10 point mark. Number five on the shot clock. McKay, a fall away floater. How about the touch from the sophomore? <laughs> and that, there are some difficult shots that the Chippewas are hitting tonight, and they've needed them to go. Being down 13 right now, they got to find a way to get a couple stops. The pump fake by Harris. Chippewas have played pretty solid defense. And there's another good defensive possession. This time, Matty Smith getting in the grill of Wes Clark, who picks up the offensive. That's the third on the senior. And now that's 17 fouls on Buffalo, and we've got 8.37 to go. That could play into Central Michigan's favor. They're the best free throw shooting team in the NCAA at 81%. And down 13, they need to take advantage of that, start driving inside, inside 15 feet, try and get themselves to the free throw line. Only have seen seven total free throws combined tonight, six for Central Michigan. They haven't missed, but when you're shooting three for 25 from the outside, you're right, man. You have to find another way. Free throws may be it. DeLeo, it's just a 4-3 for CMU. And it's twofold, Adam. Not only are free throws are they really good at shooting the free throws, but the clock's also stopped, obviously. So yep. you're elongating the game, creating more opportunities for your team to cut into a deficit. Central Michigan still lingering, hanging around against the best team in the conference. How about the strength zone from Nick Perkins? That's an imposing figure underneath. And really talented guy at 68 250. Cecil Williams getting the bucket on the other end. 12 points in this second half for the senior. 14 on the night for Williams. Under eight to play. Does Central Michigan have a run in them before this one comes to a close? Jordan weaving around the baseline. Ball movement finds it to Harris. Good stroke from the lefty. Crisp passing. Skip passes, finding the open player. Move the ball, move the ball quick enough and you're gonna be able to find an open player. Harris has been the go-to guy all night, knocking down the open looks. Tenth straight game of double figures tonight for Harris. He now has 19 to lead the way. Williams lost it, recollects, tries with the left hand. It stays off the bottom of the rim. Danger zone for Central Michigan, needs stops. 
Nassenberg to the corner. Harris another. Back-to-back -back threes by the junior transfer. And Keno Davis has to take a timeout. The largest lead for Buffalo. The man cannot be stopped, Adam. Knocking down shot after shot. 22 points. Four of eight from three. Jeremy Harris, ladies and gentlemen. This is the president going off the rails. They tried to assassinate me, and I am the one under investigation. Welcome to the resistance. I swore to protect my country. I will end this. He's just been hijacked. All it takes is one call, and people start dying. The country is in free fall. You're acting like it's me off my mess. I will hunt you down. I will kill you. Homeland. Season premieres Sunday at 9, only on Showtime. Start your free trial. Asenberg draws two defenders. Perkins before he's set to shoot. Travel is big. Continues to be a big night for Jeremy Harris, the 6'7", 175-pound junior from Greensboro, North Carolina. 22 points to lead the way for the Bulls and to lead in this game. He is knocking down shots from the outside, 4 for 8 from behind the arc. And he is one point away from his career high, the reason the Bulls have got up to their largest lead of 16 points. They entered halftime shooting 50%. They've upped it to 53%. Shooting closer to 60 in the second half, the Bulls are. They've come out of the locker room playing well. The Chippewas trying to go shot for shot with them, 10 of 22, but one of eight from three, and I think that's the story for Central Michigan here tonight, Adam. It's not that for a lack of energy. They came out ready to play, diving on the floor for 50-50 balls, trying to win those battles, but it's the outside shooting that has just not followed for the Chippewas. Was, and that's why they find themselves down 16. In his last four MAC games, Harris is shooting exactly 50% from behind the arc, 31 for 62. And he's continued that tonight, hitting four for eight. I mean, the ball finds you when you're knocking down shots and scoring the basketball at a high clip, and it certainly did in transition that last time down the floor. The extra pass finds Harris wide open in the corner, and he's able to knock it down. In the meantime, for Central Michigan just has not been their night shooting behind the arc. You can't beat many teams, especially the top one in the conference, when you go four for 26 for three, and they've had some great looks. Round three, getting to the bucket as it rolls home. Opens three for Massenburg, knocks it through, and he's fouled. Leading scorer for the Bulls. Knocking down a shot from the outside. Buffalo, over 70 now in the second half. This is President Ron off the way. They tried to assassinate me, and I am the one under investigation. Welcome to the resistance. I swore and oath to protect my country. I will end this. The presidency's just been hijacked. All it takes is one long move. People start dying. The country is in free fall. You're acting like it's me off my bed. I will hunt you down. I will kill you. Homeland. Season premieres Sunday at 9. Only on Showtime. Start your free trial. Four minutes to play. Team you hanging around close. Beachler will try the three. Rebound tracked down by McKay. He stepped out of bounds. Buffalo is starting to flex their muscles as we come back in the second half. 6.21 to play. The Chippewa fans hoping for something to cheer about, but when you take on the top team in the conference, a team that's won 17 games, 9-1 start in the Mid-American Conference, 
Buffalo is showing you why they're one of the best teams potentially in the mid-major level now with a 17-point lead. It's our first look at Buffalo in person, and I think they're as advertised. They love to run. They've got the players and the athletes to do it. I mean, they, they just don't seem to get tired, and they just beat you down the floor. You watch the bench for Buffalo. If you get a chance when they want to get out and run in transition, it's like a third base coach on the baseball field. They're just telling them to go, 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 get out and run as fast as you can. And that's how the Bulls can get so many easy buckets is by beating you down the floor. And it may not be a fast break point, Adam, but it's beating the team and, and opening up lanes that aren't normally there in the half court. Nate Oates, Nate Oates talked to that, talked to us about that before the game. His team, he thinks, one of the best conditioned teams, no doubt, in the conference because of how much they get up and down the floor. So they go 100% a couple of days after their game. Doesn't like to go just an hour. He'll go two full hours and make sure that they get up and feel the pain of going up and down quick because they do it every night. Oh, yeah. And you look at the box score here. The last media timeout, eight fast break points for Buffalo. And you're going to say, okay, well, I thought you said they like to get out and run. Well, they do. They like to beat you down the floor. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean it's it's transition buckets, but it's maybe five, six, seven seconds later while the defense is finally settling into the half court, they've lost track of somebody in transition, and that's what makes it so effective. With the ball around the perimeter, good ball movement leads to open opportunities. Here's another example as Harris finally misses from the outside. DeLeo, nice work underneath to grab the loose ball. 16-point game, chip wise if they're going to try and get back in this one, run needs to come now. Struggles have been from the outside. Williams helping the cause, though, from three. Chip's going to take... Three balls from whoever can knock them down here down the stretch. And they're right back there, that 10, 12, 13 point deficit. Chippewa's got to break through that glass ceiling. Half of the field goal attempts tonight for CMU have come from behind the arc. The bad news, they're just five for 27 in that department. Push is called. Kevin McKay picks it up, his second. Central Michigan has been excellent from the free throw line again, eight for eight. Probably hasn't got there as much as they would like to, though. That was one of the reasons they were going to come back and hang around against Ohio. 31 for 36 from the stripe. But one of the keys for Coach Oaks, don't follow them because they shoot so well 15 feet away. That can really change the complexion of a game. It can slow down a rhythm of a Buffalo if you're shooting free throws and it's walking down the floor to shoot more free throws. But taking it hard to the rack, Cecil Williams trying to change the momentum. 17 points for Cecil Williams single-handedly keeping CMU in this game in the second half. Despite the shooting holes from the outside, Chippewa's four scores and double figures. And Cecil Williams got 19, chance to make it 20, and the CMU could be as close as they've been in a while. Williams, the Mac West Player of the Week, averaged 20 points per game and over seven rebounds in his two last two contests. Had a career high 27 on Saturday, and a double overtime thriller win for Central Michigan. Another terrific night here as the senior continues to get better as this season goes on. Catch and shoot, three left wing. Now Williams battling for the board and ties up with Nick Perkins. Good work from Williams, but it'll stay with Buffalo. The ball movement is so quick. You know, they're, they're working it around. It's a, it's a full recycle. Four players touch it, and it goes from elbow to underneath to baseline and back out up top. And that's why Perkins is able to just go one-on-one -on -one with Cecil Williams for the offensive rebound. Perkins works against Williams, just hoists. McKay able to get the board after the clear out from Central Michigan underneath. Round three, quickly to the corner. Kaczynski. Loose ball last touched by Buffalo. And again, the woes from the outside. Central Michigan has had great looks from the outside. They're getting what they want. Just, the shots aren't going in. And you just can't help but think, where would this game be if CMU was having a hot shooting night? I mean, they could be having a sizable advantage right now as opposed to being down 11. And even if they're shooting 30% yeah. from behind the arc, they're shooting 18% uh -huh. 
five for 27. You hit five more threes. This is a game. And the foul discrepancy here in the second half, 10 for Buffalo. DeLeo's going to shoot two right now in the double bonus. CMU not even close to going into the bonus yet. With that said, with how bad Central Michigan is shot, <laughs> they are within 10 points with over four minutes to play. I mean, this is there's still an opportunity here. Just hanging around, resiliency, just showing that they can battle through adversity. And imagine if they could win a game like this to show that they don't need to go off and shoot, score 80 points, 85 points. They can fight, win a fight it out, you know, 12 round boxing match type game. Chippewas on a 9-0 run to get themselves back in this one. Final push upcoming, four minutes to play. Buffalo has led the entire way. Been as large as an 18-point lead. Jordan throwing it up over the top of Meyer, and it comes off. Chippewas haven't been closer than eight points in this second half. An opportunity presenting itself here. Under four minutes to go. DeLeo, a step back three, and another miss from the outside. Massenburg to drive between two defenders, and he draws the whistle. Bulls, three minutes and 34 seconds from their 10th conference win. It's a nine-point lead for Buffalo in Mount Pleasant. Off the rails. They tried to assassinate me, and I am the one under investigation. Welcome to the resistance. I swore to protect my country. I'm on the Presidency's just been hijacked. All it takes is one wrong move, and people start dying. The country is in free fall. You're acting like it's me off my meds. I will hunt you down. I will kill you. Homeland. Season premieres Sunday at 9, only on Showtime. Start your free trial. They were welcomed and saluted, then challenged and tested. Before they were champions, they were the rookies at the Masters. Number 9 Duke battles number 21 Carolina, Thursday at 8 on ESPN. Seventy-two, sixty-three. Buffalo in front. They've led all night long on ESPN3. Out of Jackson, Matt DeVries, the top team in the Mid-American Conference, and Central Michigan battling Buffalo. You see the standings: nine and one. They've won ten of their last eleven. They've won eleven straight against Mac West foes. And the Chippewas hanging around, not shooting well, trailing by nine, and a big game for CMU. You see them jumbled up towards the bottom, but Central Michigan has picked up two wins. They're back to four and six in a Mac West side that, outside of Toledo, there's a lot of teams that could be up and down throughout the end of the Mac season. Well, now after going to Akron this weekend, Adam, you've got Northern Illinois and you've got Eastern and Western Michigan, so that's three in a row. West opponents a chance to really make up some ground for the Chippewas over the next two weeks. Massenburg at the free throw line. And a junior from Dallas, Texas, able to hit the first. Massenburg with 16 points, but he's been outdone tonight by Jeremy Harris, who has 22. Massenburg finding his ways to score, though, now with seven. 17 and a lead back to 11. Final 330. This has been the deficit pretty much the entire second half. 
Krasinski in the corner. Knocks down Central Michigan, 6-3. Quick timeout by Keno Davis. Final timeout for head coach Keno Davis in Central Michigan. So trying to set up their game plan for the final three and a half minutes. And look at this quick ball movement. Starts with Sean Roundtree. Swing it to David Leal. The extra pass to Josh Krasinski. And he's able to knock it down. Setting a new career high here last week. Knocking down eight threes. You gotta start knocking down some of those shots if you're gonna make up this eight point deficit. And it starts right there. 280 threes for Josh Kaczynski. And he has been phenomenal in his career. You mentioned the big game last time here at home. And the guy has been phenomenal. Continues to shoot the ball well, and Keno Davis talks highly of him, but just think again, we continue to mention it. Six threes tonight on 30 attempts. CMU knocks down three more. This one's even closer, but still, here we are. 321 to play. It's an eight-point game. Same deficit it was at halftime. Well, and it's so out of character for Central Michigan to not knock down some of those threes, and they had some good looks. And now Buffalo just trying to grind out this win on the road. And they're starting, the Kent State game is starting to creep into their heads right now. They're thinking, wow, we were up by 18 in this game too in the first half. And, uh, you know, even into the second half a little bit, they had a sizable advantage, Buffalo did. They got to try and fight through that mentally, break through that mental block, thinking, we can do this, we can close this thing out. We just got to be strong on the defensive end and be smart with the basketball. Bulls with that eight-point lead, same as it was at halftime. This is the closest Central Michigan has been since the first half. Buffalo now trying to close it out. Chippewa's hoping to steal one here at home after trailing the entire way. Clark left alone, and that could be a dagger as he knocks it down. Huge shot. And that's what I'm talking about, just being smart, not doing anything you're not used to. Just run your offensive sets, quick pass passing and good ball movement. And those looks are going to open up, and one did right there for West Clark. Round three, gets it back for CMU. And a near turnover, loose ball. Last touched by Central Michigan, stays with the Bulls. Sean Roundtree getting an open look at the top of the key. Able to knock it down. Kevin McKay, that pass, that recycle back out to the top. Roundtree knocks down an open look. Now a tough spot for an inbound for Buffalo, right in front of the CMU bench, kind of tucked away in that corner. 2.40 to play. Eight-point game. Inbounded and swiped away by Roundtree, but then taken back by Clark. Up ahead, three on one. Perkins lost it, and McKay coming out of the mix with it. Chippewas will try and get a little closer. Central Michigan has knocked down their last two long balls. Shooting just seven for 31 from deep. Could they potentially get another one? Make it closer. Instead, Roundtree will drive. Has it blocked out of bounds. Good swat by Perkins. Seven on the shot clock for CMU. Roundtree trying to make something happen, penetrating inside. Not an easy job by Sean Roundtree to have to go up against Nick Perkins inside. Seven on the shot clock. DeLeo, a catch and shoot, fadeaway three. Offensive rebound to McKay. Shovels to Williams between two, he scores. Hanging in the air, Cecil Williams getting it to go. Central Michigan as close as they've been all night. Six point game under two to play. The top team in the Mid-American Conference trying to hold on. Chippewas trying to win their 10th at home. Harris into the lane. Kick out, and the three is off. Offensive rebound by Perkins. That's a killer. Right spot, right time. Just out-muscled Cecil Williams. Nick Perkins makes a living down underneath. 190 seconds to go. Williams against the bigger Perkins. Shovel to Williams. Wasn't a great pass, and a turnover. I think just a little too risky from Kevin McKay. I understand what he's doing. He sees the crease right there to get it to Cecil Williams. Just a little too risky for me, but Nato has to be so happy with the play of Nick Perkins right here. He's going one-on-one -on -one with Cecil Williams. Williams trying to tie up that right hand from Perkins. He's able to break away, grab that offensive rebound, go right back up with it. Second chance point, so huge late. 
And that's what Buffalo does best in the conference, is grab those offensive rebounds. And it shows there on that late Buffalo possession. Goals in the bonus the rest of the way. Chippewas will try and get a steal. It goes to Perkins. He's fouled from behind by DeLeo. And Perkins, the best free throw shooter on this Buffalo team at 78%. We'll head to the free throw line for a one and one. 66 seconds to go. Free throws and taking care of the basketball. Buffalo most likely going to get out of Mount Pleasant with a win. Just got to take care of your business here late. Free throw is up and good from the junior from Ipsy. Only one miss from the line tonight for either team. I haven't seen a ton of free throws, 16 in all. Two for two for Perkins. Six for six tonight for Buffalo. And remember, no more timeouts for head coach Keno Davis, so Chippewa's got to roll with it here down the stretch. Foul on Devontae Jordan, his third. Well, this has been a valiant effort by CMU. They can't come back. Matt, they're going to kick themselves for just not shooting as well as they normally do. They're averaging around 10 threes a game. They're shooting it from the outside. 34% clip for the season. And tonight, 7 for 32. Shooting just under 22% from three. And I think that's where you can put the spotlight. And I think people may be getting a little tired of us talking about the three-point yeah. shooting, but Buffalo's right at their season average. They've knocked down 11 threes. They average 10, and they are right at 36% for the season. They're at 37% tonight. So Buffalo did what was expected of them from the three-point line. Chippewas just needed a little bit more. Bulls break the press with Clark. Central Michigan needing to foul to try and extend this game if they can't get a steal. Massenberg now has it, and Kaczynski commits the foul. Well, we've talked about Central Michigan missing the threes. I think the credit deserve, deservingly so goes to Buffalo for forcing Central Michigan to take those threes. They've taken 32 triples, but that's because of the athletic length. It's been tough for CMU to get in the paint and score. Massenberg with the first Buffalo miss. Leaving the door open just a bit. Up top, Williams lost the basketball, and Perkins collects the loose ball. It was Foul there. on McKay, yep. It was there in transition. Cecil Williams was leaking out. Cecil Williams has had dozens of alley-oops in his career at Central Michigan. Just a little late to the rim. I think the pass is right there, but Cecil Williams a little late. Coach is pulling his hair out. That look says it all tonight from Keo Davis. Again, his team has fought hard, just hasn't shot it very well. And give credit to Buffalo. They've answered every time Central Michigan has come up with a bucket. And the Bulls have led from start to finish. And Nate Oates and his team have dictated the pace. They've pushed tempo. They're comfortable playing at a high pace. They score over 83 points a game. That's a top 25 scoring offense in the nation. And they're right on that season average. Yep, 83.3 a game. And you're right. Right at the average again tonight. As free throws upcoming. This Bulls team is good. There's been a lot of talk about could there potentially be an at-large bid in the Mid-American Conference if the Bulls can continue to maybe finish at a 17-1 or 16-2 and, and maybe fall in the championship game? You certainly don't want to rely on that, but with how many wins they've racked up, looks like they're ready to get number 18, move to 10-1 and one in conference. It's tough. Got to win that MAC tournament at the end of the year to get in. The MAC has been a one-bid league, but potentially if the Bulls continue to play this well. Maybe there is an at-large bid in the future for this conference. Two free throws for round three go down. They've got quality losses too. Cincinnati's up to sixth in the country, a top 10 team. They lost to them earlier this season at Syracuse. They lost to Texas A&M, St. Bonaventure. So they've got some quality losses on their schedule. Well, don't go anywhere yet. Central Michigan still fighting Roundtree. Causes the foul, and he's going right back to the free throw line, and we'll have a six-point game if Roundtree can hit a couple of free throws. Still not over yet. 
Nate Oates wants a timeout. Think he's a little worried too, trying to get his team to finish. And Central Michigan not going anywhere. Well, this is a team in the Chippewas that have had double digit wins at home three straight seasons. They've been very good in this building and they don't go out, they don't go down easy inside McGriff Arena. You win in Mount Pleasant just as pretty much anywhere else in the Mid-American Conference. You go on the road and win, it's big time and Chippewas are fighting hard. They really are and it's important to note that Central Michigan has battled to the very end here and that's a testament to the Chippewas not giving up even when it looked like it was done and dusted with Buffalo going up by double digits in the last minute but you got to make your free throws Buffalo's missed one or two down the stretch here Central Michigan has knocked theirs down 14 of 15 from the free throw line so we harped on it a little bit throughout the broadcast the Chippewas not getting to the free throw line they've done a better job of that in the second half Give them credit, they've knocked them down. Buffalo just eight of nine, so not as many attempts at the strike. Buffalo trying to win their fifth straight in this series. They swept CMU the last couple of years. Both games last year were close meetings between the Chippewas and the Bulls. It was a six point 99-93 game inside McGurk Arena last year, and then a 10 point 101 to 91 game at Alumni Arena. So, CMU has been right there, but Buffalo has found a way the last couple of seasons. Sean Roundtree has quietly crept up now to 18 points, second leading score for CMU behind just Cecil Williams, who has 21. Roundtree is the first free throw. CMU now with four players in double figures. McKay with 12, Williams, as we mentioned, 21. Roundtree now with 19. DeLeo also with 12. Four players in double figures for Buffalo. Two for two from Roundtree. It is indeed a two possession game. Now you go for a trap, a quick double team. If it isn't there, you foul. Double bonus rest of the way for both teams. No foul yet. Clark up the floor and quickly from behind Smith comes tracking back. So Wes Clark, a 68% free throw shooter, will get two. 28 seconds to go. Gets the first, that's a big one to make it three possession. 13 points for Wes Clark, the senior transfer from Missouri. Clark just in his second game back playing in the state of Michigan. They went to Western Michigan earlier this year and won. Now back here in Mount Pleasant. Of course, he grew up in Detroit. Missouri never came up to Michigan, so Unique then, the senior getting a couple of chances to play in his home state. Next down, both free throws. Eight point lead, zigzagged up the floor. Williams in unabated, two more. Again, Chippewas will try for that steal. Massenburg quickly fouled, 23 seconds to play. The Still got to make your free throw. Around. Still a game. Can't get him to go. That opens the door a little bit wider for the Chippewas. And they've shown here late that maybe he's able to knock down a couple threes. And got to get the ball in the hands of your free throw shooters, your better free throw shooters, to give you the best chance. Buffalo doing a nice job, though, at the line. 18 points now for Massenburg. Each team has missed just one free throw. Buffalo 11 for 12. Central Michigan 16 for 17. Impressive tonight from the line. One for two from Massenburg. Seven point game. Central Michigan potentially looking for that three. DeLeo will hoist. Another miss. Rebound tapped around. Kaczynski has it. He'll throw it up. And that goes in from the corner. Nine seconds left, it's a four point game. And we get a foul call on a hold before the ball was inbounded, but honestly that's probably the best case scenario for Central Michigan, no clock, no time off the clock. It is the fifth personal on Sean Roundtree, he'll go out with 20 points tonight. Well, Buffalo did a good job the last 25 seconds of this game of really trying to deny Sean Roundtree a chance to get his hands on the basketball. He had no choice but to foul right there to try and extend this game. 
Well, if this doesn't show you the parity in this league, I don't know what will. It's a Central Michigan team that, I'm sure, they're sitting in fifth place in the MAC West, but challenging the best team and taking them right down to the wire. MAC is tough conference to win in when you're away from home. And that's why the conference tournament in Cleveland is always a must watch. Final 10 seconds, a six point game. Chippewas need a three. And instead, an offensive foul on Kevin McKay, and that should just about do it. Fouls on 20, Kevin McKay, that's his fifth. Four seconds to go, 88-82, Buffalo in front. Closing in on that 10th Mid-American Conference victory. And the officials, I think, going to look at this one, make sure there wasn't any extra added contacts. Yeah, if they end up going to the monitor, I would expect them to just go with a common foul. Of McKay came across the face of the Buffalo player, but I don't think it was anything malicious. And as long as all parties are all right, I would anticipate a common foul. Again, Buffalo has led the entire way. He started 7-for-7 seven seven from the floor. Got off to a 20-12 to 12 lead. Led by 8 at the break. Margin stayed right around 8-12 to 12 points in the second half. Buffalo able to balloon it to as large as 18 points. Central Michigan fought back. Got it down to within 5-6. and six. But the Bulls have just maintained that lead throughout. As Chippewas are within 4 but only four seconds left on the clock. And now we get another stoppage from the officials. Kevin McKay fouled out of the game, but he was still on the floor, so. It was a good try. <laughs> McKay out, Massenburg catches, and Kaczynski. Letting Massenburg go, and Buffalo will indeed hang on. In